Hey everybody, it's Glassbead. So I know what the handful of you that watch this channel have been thinking, which is, hey Glassbead, weren't you doing 30 days of Sourcebook? We're like three weeks into January uh, and you've only done like a handful. Uh, what gives? Uh, so the answer, other than the fact that uh, uh, Jimmy Carter died and I was in mourning, uh, was uh, uh, I have been building an MCP client for Sourcebook. Now, uh, I'll say out the gate that I flew a little bit too close to the sun with this one. So uh, in terms of actually giving Sourcebook tools, we're going to be figuring that out together some. But uh, to kind of summarize what this project is, uh, a lot of you have probably uh, already heard of, I don't know why it won't let me do this when I'm recording the screen. I know a lot of you have probably already heard of Model Context Protocol. So Anthropic released it back at the end of November. Uh, and you can think of it as, uh, like they say here, uh, USB-C uh, for AI applications. So what that means is, is that there are a bunch of servers out there that provide some capabilities. And you can think of MCP as the way that those capabilities are going to plug into your application. Uh, people use it a lot with Claude Desktop uh, to give it a lot of tools that it can work with. It can interact directly with GitHub repositories. It can use uh, persistent memory with a, a local knowledge graph, uh, perform web searches, lots of other stuff. And there's a big ecosystem of MCP servers out there that do some really, really amazing things. Um, and it's really, really cool to work with them in Claude, but... The thing that's more interesting to me is the concept of plugging these into my own applications uh, and the other existing applications. So uh, what I thought I would do here is kind of walk through how I built this client for Sourcebook, which does work, and then we're going to work through together how to get uh, how to get a an existing application to use tools, which uh, does not yet work, unfortunately. Um, it's really easy to build MCP servers. Uh, it's actually a, a fundamental tenet of the protocol's design. So MCP servers, they're lightweight. They should be really, really, really easy to build. Uh, and they are. And there are a lot of other people out there that have done um, you know, really good documentation resources on uh, helping people build their own MCP servers. Uh, the tutorials out there are, uh, some of them are really, really good. Where this gets challenging is where you have to decide, okay, I have, you know, let's say this existing code base that I'm working on uh, or uh, something that I'm contributing to. How can I build my own MCP client and, ex and integrate it with, an existing application code base. And, and right now there's a really, really big shortage of those resources, uh, both here on YouTube, uh, on other platforms on how to do that with an MCP client. And I really couldn't find anything at all in TypeScript. Um, so just while we're here, if we just go to YouTube, where, where you can see I was watching the, uh, uh, <laughs> this is why mom doesn't effing love you. Classic. So if I go and search right now, let's just go say uh, build custom MCP client. And let's just go model context protocol because it's going to give me Minecraft. So when I've gone through and looked here, I've only ever been able to find one video on how to do this. I want to just give a shout out to this guy. So if you'll give me one second, I actually know what the video is called. It's, uh, it's like Olama MCP Claude that should give it to us. So we've got this guy right here, Chris, Hay, uh, Chris Hay. Uh, I thought it was Hayek, but, uh, you, you've got Chris Hay here who's done um, a really, really fantastic job of like uh, explaining how you can um, build your own MCP client. Um, but there were two things about it 
that um, it didn't, uh, I guess, fulfill some of the questions that I have, which is that number one, um, his implementation is in Python. And number two, it's it, it, the application that he integrated it with. It's it's kind of a, a vehicle for the client itself. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's it's the one video on YouTube that could teach you how to do this. And it was really, really useful in building this. But I thought that, you know, maybe we could probably afford to have some more resources about this out here. So that's that's the raison d'etre for this video. Uh, and uh, a lot of the bulk of the remaining source book videos here in the next week are going to have to do with this project. So in this video, I'm going to introduce model context protocol for anybody that isn't familiar uh, or even just isn't familiar with the concept of MCP clients. So there's a lot of other resources out there, like I already said, on, on YouTube and elsewhere about this. So I'm not going to go too in depth on MCP itself, but I do want to touch on it for a few minutes to start out. Excuse me. And then I'll... Uh, I'll close out with a summary of what made this feature exciting to build and uh, and challenging as well. So we've got this intro here. <coughs> so MCP, just reading from here, is an open protocol that standardizes how applications provide context to LLMs. Think of MCP like a USB port for AI applications. Uh, like USB-C provides a standardized way to connect your devices to various peripherals and accessories. MCP provides a standardized way to connect AI models to different data sources and tools. So here's the general architecture of it right here. And while I was still <laughs> trying to build slides for this, I did make one. So the architecture here, it, it's a uh, host client server architecture. And all that means here is that your application, oh geez, your application is a host that has an MCP client that's maintaining one-to-one -one connections to MCP servers that expose certain capabilities via the model context protocol. So what do I mean by capabilities? We've got... Um, I, I think we've got a couple others other than this, but um, in fact, I know we do. But the three basic primitives that we're talking about are resources, prompts, and tools. Resources you can think of as data. So let's say, I'm just coming up with something. So hypothetically, if you had uh, an MCP server that was delivering weather data, or that was delivering a price feed on Bitcoin or something to that effect, uh, where it's it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be a prompt that you're going to feed an LLM. It's not going to be some kind of executable. Uh, it's data. That's going to be a resource. You've got prompts, which I'm sure is a little bit self-explanatory, self -explanatory, but uh, you're going to define here with prompts, reusable prompt templates and workflows that the clients can easily surface to users and to LLMs. So what that means is, effectively, you're providing uh, workflows to an LLM is, is usually what I see this used for, but purely in a prompt engineering context. Um, so just, you know, just something that you would send off to the LLM uh, as, a, uh, as a prompt. And then you've got tools here, which in my opinion are the most interesting of the three. And what these do are, uh, they expose executable functionality to your AI applications via model context protocol. So this can let you do some really interesting things. And one of those things so let me actually just like pull this up in GitHub. So if we go to this list of servers here, which again, I'll link in the description. <coughs> so you've got the GitHub MCP server here. And if you take a look at these tools that it exposes, <coughs> these are the means by which 
you can let an LLM application say, so I, I think, you know, in, in this case, Claude Desktop is um, what most people use this for. You can give Claude Desktop uh, CRUD permissions to your GitHub repositories, a lot of other things. Um, you know, so you can push files, create a repo, list issues on a certain repo, fork a repo, like everything, right? Um, and you're exposing this just via model context protocol from a server. So this is really, really cool because, you know, not only do you have kind of the set of official servers, so whether that's like made by MCP, whether that's made by a partner, um, you've got all of these third-party servers. X is really, really great for, um, uh, for web search. You've got Airtable connections, which is <laughs> its own set of videos. But the basic idea is, is that there's all of this just functionality out there that's available. And what makes MCP cool is that you can give that, you know, whether it's called desktop, um, which is awesome, or something that's a lot more cool, giving it to an existing application or an application that you're building um, to just have all of this functionality available to it just by updating a config file. Um, it's it's very, very, very powerful. So now that we've got kind of like an overview of this, <coughs> and uh, actually I'll, well, no, I'll go into that later. So we've got an overview of this now. So I want to take a second to describe why this project is so compelling to me. So if you look here, uh, MCP has a list of like example uh, MCP integrated clients that uh, you know has have access to all or some of MCP supported features. And you look down this list here, and there's like, I mean, maybe 12, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's only 12 of these things. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, um, they're, you know, openly uh, encouraging people to submit pull requests to add to this list because there just aren't that many out there. And... This is something that, um, I'm trying to decide how I want to put this. Um, a lot of these here, so like continue, uh, GenAI script, obviously, uh, Klein, which is an amazing tool that uh, I used as a big reference here. They're written in TypeScript, and uh, it, you know, MCP allows these tools to do some amazing things and people use these all the time, but TypeScript as a language is, is pretty underserved in this space. And so uh, there's something that Nick from Sourcebook has said in, in some interviews, and I'll, I'll let you guys go and look that up, that I find really compelling and it's why um, I feel so strongly about Sourcebook as a project in the first place. And it's that... As more and more of the hard ML stuff ends up getting abstracted away behind accessible dev tooling, we're going to be seeing the center of gravity in Gen AI moving closer to a TypeScript world than the Python-dominated world that we have here in January 2025. So <clears throat> it, it's incredibly exciting whenever I'm working on Gen AI and TS, just because there, there's no rules and it's such a free for all. Um, but that was the big challenge here as well, right? Like the, the documentation and, and the resources for MCP clients are are pretty lean. Um, as you'll see here, they, I mean, the uh, tutorial that they got here is in Python. So that's why I'm making this series, uh, which is that I'm trying to get just some more resources out there for the TypeScript community here in Gen AI. So if you, if you notice that I've done anything wrong over the course of this, like please <laughs> roast me in the comments and, and move MLNTS forward a little bit. So 
Um, that's our introduction. Uh, next, we're going to ta start taking a look at some code. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video.